What's up guys, it's Zinky Style, and uh, today I've got the devil. No, I'm kidding, I just got craft paints. You might ask, why in the world would I have out craft paints? Well, I'm going to tell you guys whether or not you want to know or not. Craft paints are some of the most looked down upon paints in the community, and for good reason. These are not very good to paint plastic with. Even with primer, the results can be a little bit on the, just, I don't know how to put it, they're, they're not good. They're not necessarily always bad, but they're not necessarily always good either. But I'm going to tell you outright what these are great for is diorama work and the reason why they're so great for diorama work is pretty much I'm sorry I did woodwork last night so there's wood shavings all over everything but the reason why they are so good for diorama work is because they're cheap and you ask why does that make them good well because it's gonna take a lot of paint to soak into this plaster and I'm definitely not in the mood to waste expensive paint. Who wants to waste expensive paint if you don't have to? Modeling paints are specially chemically formulated to work well with plastic, but these paints, although they might have lesser pigments or this or that or the other, happen to be amazingly great for coverage. And remember what I said about the brush sizes. As you can see, I have a nice big brush here. And what we're gonna do is just liberally apply this paint to everything. And more importantly than that, let me clean this cup out because I'm going to need a big cup this time. Oh, look, that's still a good brush. Ha ha. That's another good brush. That's actually a Tommy AHF, I think. Oh, no, that's a plaid. It just looks fancy. Master Touch over there. I don't know if it is any good either. I've got a little cup. Might be off screen. I don't know. Now... This is diorama work, so I don't care about the quality of the paint water. I don't care about the quality of this paint. This is a base coat. This ain't going to be a pretty coat. This isn't to be pretty. All this is to do is to make sure that everything underneath your work is one solid color. And that's how we're going to apply it. We're not going to worry about anything here. This is why I love dioramas. We're going to have fun. It's going to be like painting in kindergarten, guys. Dioramas, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I would like to do that, but might fear it. Well, there's no reason to fear it. This stuff is easy. It's easier than building the model kits. Look at that, just going on there beautifully. Now, you'll see as I start to get in this rock work, it's kind of giving me some trouble. Well, this is why I'm keeping water close by. And I just filled up a cup of water instead of using my normal water jar because I'm using a big brush and because, look at that. I got that brush sopping wet. Look at that soak into that. See, this is why we use craft paints for this. They're cheap. You can waste a lot of it. And you can get it wet as can be and soak it into this plaster so that it dyes the plaster instead of just covering the top. So it soaks into that plastic color plaster. The coloration digs in there. Now, I could just airbrush this, yes. I could spray bomb this in a few minutes probably, but you know what? It's going to cost me less than $3 to cover this. Because each one of those jars of paint right there probably cost me 70 cents a piece. And I'm using less than 70 cents worth of plastic. Plastic paint. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not expensive, guys. Dioramas are cheap and fun. This plaque two maybe three dollars what, what is two or three dollars as you can see I already finished laying some of the stuff too I finished up some of that rock work I was working on now this is not completely finished all those crooks and ridges that nightmare right there what are we gonna do I'm gonna take this paint tray right here as you can see I'm just scooping this paint up I'm being so 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 not conservative here Well, I said this paint is great for dioramas. Look at this. Look at this. That rock is covered. 
I'm gonna get my brush wet. Look at this. I'm not at all even rinsing this brush out. I'm just taking it and dumping this paint in here, letting it flow into the piece. Look at that, look at that. Just let it flow into it. Don't fight the paint. You should never have to fight your paint. It should just flow. You learn how to make it flow in every situation, you'll be okay. Look at that, some nasty stuff coming up out of the water. Don't bother me. Bada boom, bada bam. Getting in there. Getting in there. Digging into the cracks. It's also a good chance to see if any of my rocks are loose, because if they are right now is when I'll repair them. But it doesn't look like they are, so I'm doing pretty good. Oh, there goes some more water. Look at that. It just flows that paint color in there just floats it in there if it looks like I'm running out of paint guess what it ain't that big a deal cuz I still got two-thirds jar The joy of craft paint right here. Now I will say you do not want to paint a model in this stuff. I mean, I know it works. I know there are guys that make it work, but even when I made it work, it doesn't stick well. When it starts to come off, it'll just peel off like ain't no tomorrow. In the long run, it is easier just to buy good paint, especially if you're hand painting. This stuff is a nightmare to airbrush, although it can once again be done. I know there are these guys out here that can make it something really, really can. Really can make something amazing out of these paints. I've seen it. I've done a little bit of it myself and impressed people. But at the end of the day, up close and personal, the kit didn't look as good as something that I painted with Vallejo. But in these dioramas, because of the way the plaster and the wood and the different materials soak this stuff up. Look, I'm having trouble getting paint in here. So what am I going to do? Wet brush. I got my wet in there. Going over here and getting a big glob of paint. Getting lots of paint in there. Lots of paint. Getting more water. Just dripping it in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of rock I couldn't get, but in the long term, I'm gonna wind up getting all this. And oh, look at that. That's how much moisture I'm putting in here. This paint is literally running off the platter. My whole goal here is coverage. I'm not worried if the paint runs around a little bit. I want it running around a little bit. I want it to fill the cracks. I want it to fill the crevices. You can see right here, I'm just digging it in, digging it in. That rock broke. So I'll come back later and repair it. It's for the advantage, because where I was having trouble, guess what I can now do? I can take this big wad of paint, dump it in there, spread it around, Spread it, spread it. I might wind up dropping some wash off in this one to darken it up somewhat, but even though this stuff ain't even gonna be seen, I'm still working at it. Look at that, look at that, look at that. This lays a base coat. Oops, sorry, I'm turning it up where you guys can't see it. I'm gonna steal this paint right here even. I want you guys to see how easy that was, how quick that went from being nothing to being majority one color. It's a base coat, guys. You don't have to worry super heavily about what you're doing. You just gotta get it done. That is the main thing right there, getting it done. Guys, as I always say, Anyone can build anything. Zinky style out.